Please join me in welcoming back to the stage Carlos Lopez Estrada, Zach Manuel, and Lil Nas X. I mean, I'm doing one of those things where somebody like crosses the leg and it gets like real serious. <laughs> yeah, so when we were making the book, it was, um, you know, <laughs> let's go. Thank you all so much for bringing this film to Toronto, to the Toronto Film Festival. We loved it and we're so glad that you're all here. I wanna ask you, when in your career did you know that you wanted to make this film, that you wanted to document what you were doing. I want to be honest, I was like, I don't want to do this at all. This is a terrible idea, but then I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do it anyway. Because you know, I hate people knowing about my life because then I can't keep my like whole funny persona and stuff and now I'm like all serious. But like, but yeah, I'm happy I did. Yeah. Yeah. And for uh, Carlos and Zach, I want to know in the process of making this film with Montero, what did you learn that you didn't know before? What was revealed? You, go you, go, you go first. I mean, I learned a lot. I think, honestly, my first introduction to your music, I was on my porch in New Orleans and Old Town Road came out in like 2019 and I was playing it for some homies of mine. And your CD was one of the only CDs that I ever saved on my phone. And I used to listen to it when I was in transit. <laughs> And um, That's when you there know was, it's real. This is a real story. There was a lot that I didn't know. And I think, and I've said this before a couple times tonight, but I think the most surprising thing that I thought was really special was in your house, on your wall, in your bedroom, is that picture of Marsha P. Johnson in the middle. And that, I think, really just told me that you were a person who considered the history that you came from, and not just where you were in the current moment, but who had come before you and how important that legacy of black queer performers and artists and activists was to you, and that was really special. And I think immediately once I saw that, I was like. I think for me, I mean, we had so many beautiful moments shooting this movie, but there's that moment that you saw when we interviewed all the fans, we called it the, the transformation confessional. And it was before your Atlanta show, we just spent like two hours sitting and we interviewed probably like 30 to 40 people. And you know, we're all, we're all very familiar with your music, we're all very familiar with you, but I think hearing people's stories, talking about how much your music meant to them, and it's not really, you know, people, people who follow musicians talk with a lot of passion about the people they follow, but this is like, life-changing, life-saving stories of people who, people who didn't know how to see themselves, people who didn't know how to understand themselves, and all of a sudden, they had someone who was encouraging them to like, really learn to love every single part of themselves, like good or bad, complicated, um, confusing, and, and these people were just happy to be alive and happy to, like, be sharing this moment with others. And that, I, 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 it was like two hours of one after another and I remember just feeling exhausted and so thankful that I was able to experience that. And then we got to see your show and I was just like a mess, an emotional mess. <laughs> I wanna ask you next about this incredible fan base, this community that you've created. Yeah. Uh, How around long is this? <laughs> it's like, it's like still going. I think that's it. Was it? That's okay. it now. Yeah, credits are done. Um, but you're right. This community, it's not your regular just a band or artist fan base. It means a lot more because there's a lot more at stake, it seems. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your connection with your fans and what it means to build that and to grow that. Okay, let me think. I'm trying to think of something like serious and deep. <laughs> But like, you don't have to be that No, but serious. actually, no. But seriously, as I said like earlier in the movie and whatnot, I think it means a lot 
for people to like publicly support me like, oh, I like Lil Nas X, I love Lil Nas X and stuff like that because I feel like it's one of those things where it, it makes people view you differently, you know what I mean? It's like, and also even like straight people and stuff, especially straight men, it's like, oh, you like Lil Nas X, you gotta be gay or something. Um, but like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> um, I'm sure some people here want to know when are you going to be next in Toronto performing? <laughs> um, I want to drop this good ass fire ass music first and then I want to be back out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Glad to hear it. Um, there are a lot of great music documentaries, and, and we're actually showing the Talking Heads documentary at the festival, which is now uh, 40 years old. Some of them end up lasting a long, long time. Have you thought about what this might be like to watch 10 years later, or even longer? Because it captures a moment, right? You know, I actually, that's the, one of the main reasons I was like, you know what, let's do it, because I know future me is gonna watch, it's gonna be like, what the fuck, who's this? But it's, gonna, <laughs> but, but it's gonna be like emotional and I know like, you know, 10 years from now, like who knows where the hell I would be and like how much I would have like, I would change the world and, and just, I don't know, so many like hit songs and all that stuff too. But like, uh, and you know, maybe I'm like married with kids and like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Like two dogs, I already have two cats, so like two dogs and two cats. But yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, all right. Do you think future you will be very different than who you are now? I think he's gonna have my heart, cause you know, uh, I've made it important for me for this last like year or so to make sure I keep my inner child alive because that's what like keeps me going and like creative and, and just like loving myself, so yeah. yeah. I love you more, you up there. Um, we're gonna take uh, a couple of your questions, but first, uh, before we do that, so, you know, think about what you want, might wanna ask. I just wanna ask uh, Zach and Carlos about other documentaries. Was there anything that inspired you, or, you know, there's some great concert docs, or some great music docs, artist docs. Was there anything that you were looking at and thinking, that's what I, I wanna go for? I think what we did is we looked at your social media <laughs> and, we, and we said, this is so funny, so strange, so beautiful and so warm and what can we do for this film to feel exactly how we feel when we scroll through your TikTok, through your, through your Twitter. Um, yeah. And in, you know, we, ha we have to thank Andrew Morrow, our, our editor, because he like really did some magic here. Um, yeah, I don't know, Zach, did you have any? Yeah, no, I think more so than looking outward to other films as a reference, I think we look to Montero as our guide for what the tone of the film was gonna be. And the pacing and the vibe and the irreverence of it. And so, yeah, I think there's so much, he offers so much, it was really like a wealth of of, of references and motivation and inspiration to, to pull from, so. All right, cool. Do you have any favorite movies? I have to ask that since Me? we're at a film festival. Oh, I already know. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest, it's probably like, I'm like really into like futurism and stuff. So it's like Back to the Future 2, but like there's like anything that has to do with time travel. I'm like obsessed with like time and like, you know, like we can't get that back. So guys, that's deep, you gotta clap. We can't get, we can't, we can't get time back and it's like crazy. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, I'm gonna take um, a couple of your questions. Uh, there's someone right here. We'll start right here. Yes. Can we hang out? The question you is, know can what? we hang out? <laughs> you know what? Time is like precious, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's true. That's absolutely true. Not right now. After my, you know, once I, once I complete this album, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna go get spaghetti or something. It's gonna be super dope. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go back here. Yes. Yep, you. Yeah. 
Any genre I want to explore more. You know what, actually, hear me out, hear me out. You guys may not like, oh, what, folk? But yeah, I want to do like some folk music and stuff like that. But like, and uh, what else do I want to do? Uh, like, like, like Brazilian funk. I think about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Anita. All right, great. We'll take uh, one back here. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I, I genuinely appreciate that so much. All right, and we'll go last up here. Yes, the very back. Up, yes, you. One at a time, one at a time. Yeah, yeah, one at a time, please. <laughs> okay, one at a time. You, you can both ask a question. Let's both do it at the same time. We'll see who I can catch. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, let's you, let's you go first up here in the front. Like, in the front as in, like, closer to me. Yeah. No, you, yeah, you closer to me, so you, yeah. Is that the theme of the inner child? Oh, um, I mean, curiosity is really important as a documentary film. I did it, guys. It was me. It was my idea. It was all. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's important to go into any process of filmmaking without too many uh, preconceived notions, um, a fair amount of research, but not too much research. I don't want to know that much. I want to be really curious about you, and I want to ask a lot of questions, and I want to, and I think I did, right? I asked a lot of questions. Yes, so many questions. He asked a lot of questions. <laughs> um, so yeah, the inner child, always being curious, always being playful, always being spontaneous, and it's really easy to do that around Montero, so. And Ma Maximus, the kid who played young Montero, had a really beautiful arc in- Shout out Max. Yeah. He, originally he was very involved with, with the show for you know, reasons he was not able to go on, but then he came back on the film and, and we just, like, we spent, that was our last shoot day together. We went to Atlanta, to your hometown, you weren't even in, in the actual shoot, but you came and hung out with us the whole time, and we got, yeah, you, you, you directed with us, and it was just a really beautiful experience. Yeah, I'm a director, just calm down, relax, yeah, yeah. Would you ever be tempted to direct a feature film? Oh, there's yes. maybe something that's gonna happen. Really? Yeah. All right, heard it here first. <laughs> you know we have to come back with it, though, right? I'm gonna be right here. <laughs> All right. Okay, all right, one last question. I am gonna go to this person right here. Yeah, go ahead, yes, you got it, you got it. Last question, go ahead. Uh, sorry, please, go ahead, please. Question well, is from someone from Bermuda. I want to ask about your nephew and life advice. Um, yeah. Wait, say that again, the last part? Uh, your nephew, life advice. Oh, well, what life would you advice? give to... Well, well, first of all, I didn't think people could like escape Bermuda. I thought that was like a thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats on that to you. Um, second, my life advice. Um, I guess it's a lot. Here's my life advice. Uh, if you're scared to do something, you probably should, but, but hear me out, hear me out. Not like jump off a building, like that's, that's not, that's stupid. But I mean, just like a lot of times when you feel stuck in life, do the thing that you're most afraid to do, but you have this inner knowing inside of you that you need to do that thing. Like for me, the first time it was like, I need to make music because you know, I want to create music and I feel like that's going to be my future, but I had this pressure to be the first person in my family to graduate college, but I was like, nah, fuck that. I want to make music and I'm just going to have to deal with that feeling of people being disappointed in me for this, uh, this mean time. And then the second time with me coming out of the closet, you know, that was my biggest fear. I was like, oh no, 
I want to do this shit. And then the third time, you know, it's like with the Montero Call Me By Your Name video, it's like this video is crazy and, and I'm being overtly gay and like this satanic stuff. But it, it, it was very important. It helped me grow. So my, my, my biggest advice is do that thing that you are most afraid to do. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's perfect. It's a great way to end. We are out of time. So I'm just going to ask you to please join me in thanking the incredible team from this film. Carlos Lopez Estrada, Zach Manuel, and Montero, Lil Nas X. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching this. I love you so much. Stay tuned for, you know, future music and everything. And I want to thank my brothers right here. Uh, without you, this would not have been possible. And everybody else on the team that's watching right now. Uh, let's do a little hug so we look, like, cool and stuff. Selfie. Hey, person that keeps screaming, you're my favorite. Let me, let me do it. With my... Let me do it. I'll do it. Yeah, you got long All right, everybody, we're gonna do like a big group selfie. <laughs> long live okay. Montero. Wait, one time. On the count of three, long live Montero. One, two, three. Long live Montero. Yay! Bye. <laughs>